sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get over 2,400 documentaries for free for 31 days. Link in the description. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Yes, everyone's favorite supply chain exfiltrator has just released a new report. Not about this year's iPhone, not even about next year's iPhone, but about the year after that's iPhone, iPhone 2021, or the iPhone some of us will be taking to go watch Thor Love and Thunder at the end of Marvel Phase 4. Now, Guo's reports are usually based on the actual information he manages to broker out of the plants in China, which is why it's often uncannily accurate. This iPhone 13 rumor, though, seems less like that and more like supposition based on patents and component roadmaps, which is fine, just different, and it's important to recognize the distinction when weighing the rumor. So, what Quo is rumoring this time is what Barclays rumored last time, that Touch ID will come back to the iPhone. Guo just thinks it won't be in 2020, but in 2021. Namely, fingerprint on display, or FOD, which is the new fancy term, and specifically the Qualcomm type, which uses ultrasonic technology rather than optical. And if we remember, Apple gained access to pretty much all of Qualcomm stuff when they reached their settlement earlier this year. Touch ID, as we know it today, as it still ships on a variety of Apple devices from the iPhone 8 to iPad Air to MacBook Pro, uses a capacitive ring to trigger an optical reader, and it's, <laughs> what's more than rock solid? iron ore solid? The first few generations of under display, sorry, on display fingerprint readers have been more like, I don't know, sponge solid, smoke solid? But that's rapidly changing according to Guo via Mac rumors. In terms of technology, we predict that four critical technical issues of FOD will significantly improve in 12 to 18 months, including module thickness, sensing area, power consumption, and lamination yield rate. Therefore, we believe that Apple will launch the new iPhone equipped with both Face ID and FOD to enhance security and convenience thanks to the multiple biometrics. Now, as anyone who's been following this channel knows, we've been talking about this right here for years. Link of course, in the description. Long term though, it's best not to think about things like Face ID or Touch ID. That is, they won't be discrete systems, but part of a larger biometric system, a me ID, so to speak. Touch ID, Face ID, Voice ID, Motion ID, all of these systems will just work together so that every contact, every glimpse, every word, every step is taken as part of a threshold of trust. And when your device is certain it's you, it's just unlocked. No overt action required. And when it's not, it prompts you and you authenticate using whatever method is most convenient to you in the moment. So to me, this is really less about Guo making iPhone 13 predictions and more about him joining us on this ride to the future of passive ambient biometric security. But let me know what you think and how much you want Touch ID back in the comments below. Thing two. Quo also added fuel to the 3D sensing rear camera rumors for the iPhone 12, and that's the 2020, not 2021 iPhone for those trying to keep score at home. Specifically, time of flight or TOF systems via Mac rumors. We predict that three new second half 2020 iPhone models will all be equipped with the front face ID, and two of the new models will provide rear TOF. Last year, on the eve of the iPhone XS event, Guo said that time of flight wouldn't be appearing in the iPhone 11 due to lack of benefits over the current portrait mode system and the need for 5G networking to make truly revolutionary augmented reality experiences, which I mean is super 5G thirsty, but whatever. The only difference this time is that Quo is saying the time of flight sensor is only coming to two of the iPhones instead of presumably all three. This past January, Mark Gurman and Debbie Wu of Bloomberg targeted the iPhone 12 for the time of flight, saying, the rear-facing longer-range 3D camera is designed to scan the environment to create three-dimensional reconstructions of the real world. It will work up to about 15 feet from the device. And I'll add in once again that I've been hearing scuttlebutt about just how cool this rear AR camera system and software is for years, and I just want to see it ship already, but only when it's good and ready. And with use cases beyond just putting an emoji on your friends or having licensed characters dance through your LCs. If the last half decade of computational photography has been about allowing tiny phone cameras to do what giant DSLRs have been doing forever, the next half decade will be about going far beyond that. Not just with time of flight sensors. Those are chipsets and historically Apple doesn't just ship chipsets, they ship feature sets. No NFC chip. 
Apple Pay feature, no ultra wide lens, optical zooming out and smart framing. No time of flight sensor, but complete photo recomposition? Let me know what you think in the comments. Thing three, closing out our Quoa Palooza today is yet another report, not about iPhone 14 or iPhone 15, stop ducking and covering, resume your normal viewing positions. No, this one is about how Apple may handle any 10% tariffs that may be going into effect on September 1st, 2019, if in fact any such tariffs actually go into effect. Apple typically announces new iPhone and Apple watches at the beginning of September and ships them mid to late September. Same with iPads and Macs in October. And that leads into Apple's traditionally blockbuster holiday quarter. So the fear is a 10% hike in the US at a time when many people already feel the price of flagship phones and devices is way too high will cause problems either for profits or for sales, depending on whether the companies or customers end up sucking them up. Quote for his part thinks all the sucking is gonna be done by Apple via Mac rumors. In the mid short term, if Apple absorbs most of the additional costs due to tariffs, there will be a negative impact on its profits from its hardware business, but the company will reap benefits in its brand image and relationships with suppliers. We also believe that the negative impact on Apple are limited and temporary because the profit from services business is growing and non-Chinese production locations will gradually increase. Specifically, Quo thinks India, Vietnam, and other regions could meet US demand for iPhone, Apple Watch, and iPad by next year, and the Mac by 2021. As to bringing more manufacturing back to North America, well, you can't just tariff that back into existence. We'd have to choose as a matter of priority policy to start investing heavily back into trade school education and economic zones with massive capacity in close proximity in order to make that even feasible, much less viable, and well before the next few decades of automation hit. And I would love that. But so far, like most things, we've proven far better at talk than action and much better at mortgaging future prosperity for present comfort anyway. But if you want to see where it's all heading, check out The Next World on CuriosityStream. Here's the blurb. How can the massive amounts of data and the new developments in artificial intelligence inform us individually and as a society? Michio Kaku, physicist and futurist, opens up the brave new world of information and the innovative ways to interpret and use it. It's available worldwide on CuriosityStream, on the web, on Roku, Android, Xbox One, Smart TVs, iOS, Chromecast, Amazon Fire, Amazon Kindle, and Apple TV. CuriosityStream is the world's first streaming service addressing our lifelong quest to learn, explore, and understand. Go to curiositystream.com slash vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream, and thanks to all of you for supporting Vector iPhone 13 rumors already. Yeah, yikes. The possible return of Touch ID-like fingerprint authentication, if not Touch ID itself. iPhone 12 and time of flight sensors for the ultimate augmented reality thrill ride. And iPhone 11, the potential tariffs it might well face and how Apple may have to deal with them. Now, hit like, hit subscribe, and love and thunder that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video. And then hit up the comments and let me know what you think and how soon we'll get iPhone 14 rumors because legit, LOL. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.